What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the pod at the Palace. Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Bordelon with you as always from Natty State Sports Studios in downtown Fayetteville. It's Monday morning, April the 15th. Arkansas still does not have a scholarship basketball player <laughs> on its roster. I'm a little surprised by that, but I'm not worried about it, and I don't think anybody should be. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised, too. I was waiting on like the 8 or 8.30 commit drop yes. last night. I was fully prepared for that but the only thing that only thing that we got was Tremont Mark is going to a soon-to-be SEC school so yeah what the was, hell that's man it's about it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and I don't I can't I can't blame Tremont Mark for uh for hitting the portal I mean given all the circumstances it makes a lot of sense I'd like to say I can blame him for going to Texas but he's a Texas native he's yeah. from there yeah you know I get it it's gonna be weird seeing him in the uh in the burnt orange but honestly he played at Arkansas for one year, had a good year, and, uh, you know, good luck to him. Yeah. I mean, it, it made total sense. So he's like, like you said, he's a Texas kid, Dickinson native, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes makes perfect sense. Like, he uh pretty good at Houston for, for three years and yeah. uh, came here and was really good. It's just going gonna to be really weird to, you know, for Arkansas to potentially face him. Like, if Arkansas is going to play Texas in basketball next year, there's no right. doubt about it. It's just going to be super weird watching <laughs> watching the black hole in action. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Facing Arkansas. Right. But he is the king of uh, of taking and making tough shots, and yeah. that's uh, that's kind of the staple of Rodney Terry's offense down there. So he'll, he'll, he'll fit, fit right, right in with yeah, what they got going absolutely. on. <laughs> uh, I saw some Devo stuff, too, that he was at, at Grand Canyon on a visit. A lot of buzz after that one. I think yeah. uh, FAU, right? Mm-hmm. Florida Atlantic, he's he's there or going or whatever. So um sounds like Devo might hit on one of those sneaky uh, Cinderella tough out mid-majors. And sure. he might. He could really thrive probably at a place like that. Yeah. So, we'll I found out that he was at Grand Canyon because a kid that is from Arkansas, from the state, is playing, played at GCU, and then he just tweeted a picture of the back of Devo. It was like one of the, like one of Arkansas's <laughs> photographers got like one of those black and white pics of him like talking to the radio team after a game or whatever. He just dropped it, and so I was like, "Oh, well, I guess he's at, I guess he's at GCU." How about that. But, I mean, he picked a couple really nice spots to take visits to, didn't he? I'll say, yeah. It's about as as picturesque as as you could probably ask for. Right, no doubt about it, man. Um, yeah, Grand Canyons. Their their gym is awesome and their crowd is nuts, dude. It's electric like that, in there, that place yeah. is absolutely crazy. He'd have a lot of fun uh, at a place like that. You know, just gonna have to start taking some things with a grain of salt. I think I think part of the problem right now, because like, Razorback fans are frustrated, man. Like every time I tweet something out, I get like 50, 50 is not really an exaggeration either. They don't have anybody on the roster yet. When's Cal gonna get to work? When are they gonna sign somebody? Listen, I get it. I get it, dude. I'm anxious too because they don't have any players. I've been hit with like four or five of those, and I don't like. I'm not a recruiting person. Like I don't. I don't know, man. Yeah, and I'll know when y'all know. And the truth is, like nobody really knows right now except for for Cal and his staff and and the kids. Like it's uh, brand new staff. Everybody's getting acclimated. Uh, We're getting acclimated, developing the sources, and uh, there are people that you talk to who who have a pretty good idea of what's going on. But there's also a lot of like speculation and and connecting dots and everything and and maybe we should uh, just be a little bit more realistic about our timelines. Like I didn't realize the Wooden Award thing in LA it was like a full weekend event. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't realize either. that. Like I thought he was just like down, out there and back the next day or something. Yeah, I heard that announcement when it was time for us to start moving to the interview room the other night. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Calipari is going to be out in Los Angeles for the what was it the John R. Wooden Award? Yeah, ceremony or whatever. So I just imagined it was a one day thing, just kind of right. like kind of like. And then did, was it? Was it Saturday that he's like, you know, posting all the the photos from being out there with Caitlin Clark and uh, Ted Lasso and, and yeah. everything else, which is pretty cool, honestly, yeah, to neat. to see there. But um, I didn't realize that. Had I known that he was going to be out there most of the weekend like that, I, I probably would have pumped the brakes a little bit on some of the things we were hearing about. You know, maybe a few guys committing. Uh, it doesn't make that doesn't mean it's impossible for it to have happened. Sure, uh, but I think there's probably something to be said for these kids who are committed or all in with Cal, like to at least want to come see the campus and 
the facilities and everything at Arkansas, at least on a Zoom or so, you know right. something, uh, before making it official. So I I I, I imagine the ball is going to get rolling here pretty quick. Um, you know, if it doesn't, then I'll get concerned. <laughs> but <laughs> but right now, I really don't think it's a big deal to worry about. But I know fans are are anxious, and I am too, man, because uh, I want to see what this thing looks like, and I want to. Uh, you know, like Kentucky's got all the hype right now after that press conference. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But um, they need some momentum to get things rolling a little bit. And uh, hopefully that comes sooner sooner rather than later. But honestly, like all it takes is it just takes one, you know, yeah. to get the ball rolling a little bit. Um, I also have a feeling we're going to start seeing more things leaked out there about Arkansas being involved with transfers, which we have a little bit of news on that. Um, Cal's a pro, man. That him and and the staff that he's bringing in, like those guys know how this game works. For sure, and uh, they can say they're not on social media and everything like that, but they they understand the pulse of the fan base, the recruiting world, and they'll uh they'll be all right. They'll get it figured out. Yeah, for sure. And I, I I'm I'm with you. Like I had somebody message me. It was like last night on Twitter, and was like, "When's Arkansas gonna get somebody?" Like, and then they said, "I'm getting nervous." Like he's been on the job for like four days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. He's gonna be okay. Like this isn't his first, isn't his first, uh, his first recruiting cycle. Far right. from it. I mean, uh, I but think yeah, I'm I'm ready to start talking about these guys like more definitively in yes. terms instead of just uh, like here's how this kid can help Arkansas instead of like here's what he did last year. Yeah, I'm ready to just I'm ready to start moving forward and uh, yeah, some of these names that we're starting to see pop into the portal. Again, they're still – it's still talking about what they can do uh, instead of how they're going to help, but I think we're, we're inching closer. No doubt about it. And I was kind of backtracking in my mind a little bit last night because I was thinking about it too, and I was like, damn, man, I, like, I, I really thought they'd have a guy by now. Yeah. But I remember there was a point in time last year, like closing in on the summer, when Kentucky was like – they had like five guys. They had like the freshmen who were incoming from that class, and that was basically it. And for a while there, you, you know, I just remember everybody being like, "Is Cal going to have enough? Like, what what the hell's going on here?" Yeah. It was the exact same situation for him last year, and then all of a sudden, they get Reeves back, they get Trey Mitchell late in the portal, mm -hmm. they get Big Z added to the roster, and then you know, I know they got they got bumped there upset in the NCAA tournament in the first round, but they had a hell of a team and a, and a really good year, um, especially in the regular season and everything. Okay. So he, he wound up putting together a really good roster there, but there was definitely a period of time where people were like, what's going on? Yeah. You know? So um, that actually <laughs> that, made that me feel a little bit better. probably added a lot to the narrative that Cal, like, maybe was had lost his fastball at Kentucky. Yeah. I would imagine that maybe had a little bit to do with it, but – I mean, you get, I mean, that's, it's funny how that works, right? Like he's mm -hmm. losing his fastball and all of a sudden he gets his leading score, like who, the guy who turns out to be his leading score back. And then the seven, two novelty from Croatia to come join us. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's, and the all big 12 kid from West Virginia. Yeah. yeah it's, like it's crazy. Yeah. He'll be all right. That's why it's important to practice patience. Like exactly. These guys know what the hell they're doing. They really do. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And again, I'll say it one more time, and then we'll we'll move on to, to talking about some actual kids. But I get it from yeah. Razorback fans. Like, you don't have any players, and you're so excited about this high of getting a coach like Cal, and then it starts to you know, like it. It just it just naturally wears off, and now you're like, it's time to get to work. Like, yeah. Start getting some guys. We we've been so it was stressful, man, because uh, you know like the portal was so slow coming out of the gates, and then must dips on you. It was like one bad thing after another. You thought you were hiring Chris Jans, uh, and then you wind up with Cal, and it's just it's just been a like a the, the light bulb is turned on, uh, and everybody's all pumped up, and and you don't want to come down from that. I get it, but yeah. the beautiful news is um, I can guarantee you that Arkansas will be able to put a roster on the floor next year. <laughs> so there's going to be plenty of good news coming. Like it's it's coming. It's yeah. just a matter of time. You better yeah. get us now because it's coming. Yeah, right, Dan Hurley style. There you go. Anyway. Um, even though they didn't get anybody, like there, there's quite a few, quite a few actually updates on the recruiting front. A lot of which have come this morning, like as we were sitting here typing notes to get ready for this. Yeah. So, uh, it is Monday morning for those uh, who are listening to this a little bit later. We wanted to record something and get it out 
for people throughout the day. And then obviously if, if anything breaks later on, we'll, uh, we'll be back. But, um, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to bury the lead here. Big Z he's available. <laughs> he's finally, uh, yeah. everybody knows how we feel about a Visic, uh, the big seven, two Croatian sensation from Kentucky. Um, there was a, a lot of buzz before he even became available that he would be a guy who would who'd probably be highly interested in following Cal to Arkansas. Um, he officially entered the transfer portal Saturday night. Uh, this pleases me. Yeah. <laughs> this, this makes me very excited. And I know that um, I think it was Kyle Tucker of The Athletic, who's obviously really plugged in with the Kentucky program, uh, he tweeted out last night that he's, Z is going to sit down and talk to, to Mark Pope you know, is give him the uh, please don't break up with me speech. Sure. Um, I'm not, as I'm, I'm really not bothered by that. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, as he should. And I think that's a, that's a that's respectable very, thing to do. That is quo, dude. Yeah. That's just kind of how it works. If Mark Pope doesn't try to keep Big Z on his roster, like that's, he's 0 for it's 1. your first red flag for yeah, that hire. Exactly. He doesn't. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, I know a lot of people have said, well, boy, he'd be a really good fit in, uh, in that Mark Pope offense. I agree with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, for me, this kid left Croatia to, to play for Cal and that staff. Yeah. Um, and and really, he went through a lot, and, and that staff went through a lot to get him eligible with everything that happened this year. I just think there's a really strong bond there. And, uh, you know, we'll see how this plays out. But I, I would I would be surprised and disappointed if it didn't work out in, in Arkansas's yeah. favor here. If it was me, I would have had that dude in, in Fayetteville Saturday night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But if I understand correctly, Cal was or back at his house packing stuff in Lexington or something. Cal might have already sat down. I mean, they might have had breakfast somewhere in Lexington on Sunday, for all we know. Yeah, it was just quiet about it. Yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't I even mean, rule that out, but I, I like where they're at there. Think about the recruiting, effort, the, the efforts that it took to get Z to Lexington, mm -hmm. and then the hoops that, you know, Cal and everybody had to jump through to just get the man eligible. You think that he wants more than 15 games with the kid? Yeah, no kidding. 100%. Right. So he's going to do, I feel like, whatever he's got to do to get the kid to pack his bags with him and come down here. Um, Absolutely. And I will, and I, I listen, I'll give a shout out to, to BBN here because they like bought the billboard or whatever that was like free, hashtag free Z or yeah. whatever it was. Like that was cool. I know he he definitely feels the love down there. So I, I, I'm i sure there's some pull. I, I really am. I don't want to discount that, but I just, yeah. like I said, I'd be surprised and disappointed if it didn't work out for for Arkansas oh, for sure and like just the news that he was going into the portal on Saturday mid Arkansas baseball game you're watching him lose yeah in a really really painful <laughs> yeah. way that was that was kind of like the jolt that I think I needed right there that it's like I've talked about it before like it felt felt like it was a dream for a while and right now it's just like you can you can almost taste it you can exactly almost, you can almost envision what he's going to look like with his name on ArkansasRazorbacks.com. Yeah, he will be the face of uh, of the pot at the palace. Like he's going to replace us if. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he if can it replace happens. me. That's fine. He can replace me for sure. He, he can. He can just. We'll just put the mic in front of him and let him let him go off. You know, yeah, for sure. Uh, but no, we'll we'll see what happens. Again, feel pretty good about it and. For those who are unfamiliar with his game, get familiar with it. Like this dude's seven two. Um, he's not real thin. He's not Connor Van over thin by any means. He's got some good meat on his bones. He moves well for his size. He's not going to switch and guard a point guard. Right. Um, but still some things to work on and, and sharpen up on defensively, but he can sure protect the rim. Uh, he can knock down threes. He can catch lobs. He's, uh, I would say, go beyond the stats with him. Was he like five and a half points, three and a half boards yeah, or something? Sure. You know. Um, but he came in late in the year. It's hard to get acclimated. He's gonna he's gonna be a really really good player. I mean, you just you look at the 15 games. Like that's basically <clears throat> he's got a fall semester of games yep. under his belt, which is just it's crazy. Um, but that semester of games didn't start until the spring semester. So um, I I will never forget as long as I live. Me and you watching his debut against Georgia. It was some of the most electrifying basketball I've ever seen. Just nuts, knocking dude. down threes. He's putting the ball on the floor, throwing behind the back passes on the dot, like on the money <laughs> in guys' shot pockets and blocking shots. And I remember like when Arkansas went to Rupp and played him was he wasn't a was he a, he wasn't available when they came here 
or maybe he was and he just. It didn't was like play. his second game, but he barely played. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Kai took it to him like in the first possession. That's, Kai okay. scored on him, and then we didn't really see that much of him. Yeah, he did. Might have been his first road. I really uh, don't have a memory of him when he came to Bud. I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when he played Arkansas, he had like twelve and nine in no time. Yeah, I mean that's the kind of that's the kind of like if you've got he's like he's the big that gave Arkansas fits last year. Obviously, like any kind of a mobile big, but seven two can shoot it, put the ball on the floor, doesn't have cinder blocks for feet like that. Just that gave Arkansas fits, and he just he put up numbers in a hurry. And what I love and that's about the kind him, of guy is yeah, is he can have that kind of impact, and he's a he's not a thirty minute a game guy, right? Uh, just he's just too big, you know, and so he's a you get him 18 to 20 minutes and he can make that impact for you And it's not gonna shy away, you know, maybe another really good big from coming and playing alongside him for sure uh, Which I which I really like um, DJ Wagner Ooh, buddy. Hello. Yeah. Wow. That happened right before we hit record. He's officially hit the transfer portal It was made just abundantly clear like overboard clear like It was almost alarming how clear it was made. He is wide open in his recruitment. He is wide open when yeah. he hits the portal. He's listening to all the offers. This is what everybody is tweeting out, all the national guys. Okay, we get it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a foregone conclusion that DJ Wagner is coming to Arkansas. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but what I will say is I, I do believe he's going to entertain other offers, might take some visits, as he should. Arkansas is going to be very much on the table. We know that the family ties there are incredibly, incredibly strong. That certainly helps. We'll also see if Arkansas does get Kenny Payne on staff. That would help a lot because it was a Kentucky-Louisville battle for his services coming out of high school, a Kenny Payne-Calipari battle. Yeah. And he obviously has a lot of ties there as well. So... That would be maybe a game changer if, if that was to happen. But the other hand of it, you know, we, we got to be fair here. Uh, Wagner's a very good player, but he wasn't and isn't the, the one and done type of guy that many thought he would be, probably that he thought he would be. So, for sure, a couple things that you do have to consider there does he still have, or in his camp, do they still have the full trust in Cal and his track record with 40 some odd? NBA draft picks uh, to get him where he needs to be like that, the development side of it. Uh, and then like, in all fairness, does that bag talk? Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's going to command some serious factor. NIL dude. So yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. I was looking at a, a Jeff Goodman tweet earlier. Um, Wagner can benefit from another year in college. Like I think there were, uh, maybe I saw a mock draft that had him maybe as a second rounder. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't like, he, I believe he believes he's better than a, you know, mid to late second round pick. Um, yeah. Hard to argue that another year would, would benefit him. And I would, I, I do understand like the trust angle, like, but Cal would have been silly to not play Rob Dillingham. He would of have course. been silly to not play Reed Shepard. And, and he started Antonio DJ. Reeves and, yeah. Yeah. He started him for sure. Um, I don't think the numbers were that great, but I mean, Maybe a change of scenery. It's like a change of scenery helps, and guys get better too yeah. from that. It's the freshman to sophomore jump. Yeah, and you're right. Some things that I liked his assist to turnover. I liked it was good. Th was yeah. it three point three assists, one point five turnovers? Yeah, uh, so had, more than two was, to one. Uh, top twenty in the SEC in yeah. SEC games and assist rate. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Average just under ten points per game. I know that he's a better shooter than his numbers showed. Mm -hmm. And I also wonder how much that ankle injury impacted him. He missed a little bit of time with an ankle injury. And he looked, I don't know, he just didn't look he right. He's a guy that's not like super explosive yes, anyway. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so that ankle for sure probably really held him down a little bit. But the, the thing that I remember, a couple of things. He tried to steal the shine on Big Z's debut night. He did. Because Wagner had 18 and 10 assists against Georgia that night. <laughs> And then when they played Arkansas in Rupp, he hit four threes. Fireball. And then the next game, he hit three. So there's half of his SEC made threes in a two-game stretch. Um, so, yeah, I think the jumper's a work in progress. I think if he could – if there's – do you know how to, like, add explosiveness to a guy? Like, I'm not a trainer by any means, but 
I just think a little it bit more. It's called Body by Dave Rich. There you go. Yeah, yeah Dave, <laughs> Dave Rich will get you right 100%. No <laughs> doubt about it. But, yeah, he's not an explosive guy to begin with. And, yeah, I just I think you made a good point with, with that ankle. That probably that messes with a guy. And then he sees – Reed Shepard and Dillingham and Reeves getting hit, getting theirs throughout the season. Like that probably took a toll on a on a right. freshman. And so as of as of this moment, the sense I would have is that Big Z would be something they could move fairly quickly. Wagner, it might take a little bit of time. It's kind of where I'm at with it. But I, I yeah. absolutely would I and I like I said, I'll get I get it in terms of He's opened all of his options, blah, blah, blah. Yes, of course. But I, I do think Arkansas is very much, very much on the table there. Um, ooh, also right before we started, some some great reporting by On3.com. Shout out to Jamie Shaw over there. He lists Arkansas as one of the top three to four schools to keep a very close eye on with Tennessee big man Jonas Adu. Ooh, buddy, who Hello. hit the portal late last week. I think he also... Did he also declare for the draft? I think he's going through the process. He should have. Yeah, no doubt about it. We've talked about him a lot, whether it was throughout the season or yeah. in this offseason. Jonas Adu is a guy who got to Tennessee, big man, 6'11", 225 pounds or so. And he was very – he wasn't quite as raw as like Bayfall. I mean, he played some as a freshman. His role just steadily increased. But he has come such a long way and – I've said I, I thought he was probably the most improved player in the SEC this past year. I believe that. Wound up being just a force inside for a Tennessee team that wound up, you know, they lost Euros Plavich and some of those other just monster big yeah. men that they've had, and, and he stepped in. They didn't miss a beat. He's a day one starter and, a, and an all-SEC type of guy in the portal right now. I'm guessing he's top – three or four in the rankings Easy. in the transfer portal yeah. without even looking at it. Yeah. Arkansas, uh, who else did I see on it? North Carolina was another one, which makes sense. USC, which kind of kind of made me laugh. Sure. Uh, Baylor, <laughs> Ole Miss, which Ole Miss is, is about to just get every big in the transfer portal, so we'll see what comes of that. But those were kind of the top schools there to keep an eye on. This pleases me. You know, we were talking at the beginning of the show about – Ah, uh, yeah, we'll probably start hearing some things start to leak out about transfer guys that Arkansas is connected with. When you hear it now with Arkansas, it's real. Yeah. It ain't gonna be none of this. Oh, they've just contacted somebody. It's it's they've not reached out to a guard. Yeah, from Incarnate Word. That's, right. If, come on. If Arkansas's name is attached, it's real. Yeah. And Jonas Adu is real. So for sure, we'll yeah. keep a, a very close eye on that because, it, I mean it. Let's say they get Z, great. Maybe they, you know get one of these freshman bigs that we're gonna we're gonna talk about here in a second. You got a couple guys in there. There's there is room to add another big. You need to, I think, and you might as well go get a, an absolute dude. So for I sure, would, I would love for that to happen, especially like with Umar Balo. Sounds like he's trending in another direction right now. I know Arkansas is involved there, but. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for them to get caught up. I think in that case, haven't heard too much about Big Cliff. Maybe they get him on campus and, and and we see what happens. But there are a lot of really good big men who are out there and available right now. And and I, I think Adu is at the very top of that list. So cool. On three dot com's got him as the top big in the portal right now. Really? Yeah. Well, Not the on three industry, which takes into account what all Everyone the other else, recruiting right. services do. On3 specifically has him as the number two player available in the portal and the top available big man. I just wanted to run a couple things by you real fast. Let's um, do it. Jonas Adu made an impression on Cal every time Tennessee played Kentucky last season. 11 points, 11 rebounds, three blocks at Rupp. 11 points, 8 rebounds, 5 blocks, which tied a season high in the regular season finale in Tennessee. They I lost, love Tennessee that. lost the game but because Kentucky was on a crazy heater that day. Yes. Um, <laughs> Jonas Adu is a freaking man. 67% um, at the rim on almost 170 attempts. And my the memory that is singed into my brain from when Tennessee came – to Arkansas this year outside of Dalton Connect, like just 
acting like a video game player <laughs> in the, in that game. Jonas Adu catches in that right short corner and buries like two jumpers just seamlessly. He um, shot almost 50% on two-point jumpers outside the lane on the right side of the that floor. That has like, not that's, always been in his bag. No, it hasn't. No. I mean, and he he took 30 – like he's very symmetrical game. 36 two-point jumpers left of the lane – 36 on the right side no of the lane <laughs> and he was 16 or 36 on the right 10 or 36 on the left um i just I, I think he's a he's a he's a player that i feel like you just got to do do whatever you got to do to get him like is he's, yes. a, he's a potential game changer in the front court for sure and it's like you can the beauty of the front court is you can have so many different types of big men like you've got the big z who's going to go probably top of the key to top of the key a lot of the times and can put the ball on the floor. Adu is going to offensive rebound, shot block, knock down short corner jumpers. Jaden Quaint, Jaden Quaintance potentially big time offensive rebounder. Can, can even fit, play the four. Yeah, can even play the four. Mm -hmm. So that's I'm getting chills thinking about it. But it's <laughs> yeah, they would have they would have the the full package in that front court with those guys. Maybe I'm dreaming, but it's realistic. Like it's a realistic. It is realistic. Possibility. Absolutely. Yeah, you're starting to come around to. That adjustment in mentality I that am. we were talking yeah. about. The <laughs> JP Pegues thing didn't even phase me last week. Yeah. Mikael Brown Jones to Ole Miss. That phased me a little bit. That stung a little bit. And then yeah. I saw that Malik Diaz is a possibility at, at Ole Miss, too. I'm like, Chris Beard's doing things. He is. Yeah, he is. It's going to be one to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss basketball is um, going to be a thing. Let's talk about these freshmen real quick. I spent. I would say a majority of my weekend that didn't involve spring football and UFC 300, I'm just trying to gather as much as I could on these freshmen. First of all, and most notably, Boogie Fland, officially decommitted from Kentucky today on the heels of what was, was a really nice performance at the, the Nike Hoop Summit. Mm -hmm. He's good, man. Really, 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 really smooth guard, borderline five-star guy, McDonald's All-American. He's nice. He's very nice. Gathered a good amount of intel on him this morning, and I th I think this one this one might take a, a little bit, maybe end of the month to early May. We'll see. But he was one that I felt would be maybe the toughest pull for Arkansas. Yeah. Based on everything I'm told so far, Arkansas is the I mean they're the leader right out of the gates for Boogie Fland here. I think he's going to listen to some other things. Uh, I don't know if he's going to take visits, but I, I, I'm sure he's going to hear some pitches from other places. I, I feel better about Arkansas's chances with Boogie Flan today, the day that he decommitted from Kentucky, than I have this entire time since since Cal became a thing with Arkansas. Yeah, uh, it just sounds promising. It sounds like the that his family really rocks what Cal's got going on. And I think some of the assistants that are coming over are going to play a big role there too, namely Orlando Antigua. So we'll see what happens. You never know. Again, these guys, it's like a, uh, I mean, it's, it's free agency, dude. So if another school comes in with an overwhelming offer and says, Hey dude, like you're our starting, you know, starting point right out of the gates and it's a, a great situation. Well, he's going to have some things to think about. Sure. But, yeah, out of the gates, man, I, I really like where Arkansas is at, and I just didn't feel that way 48 hours ago. Sure. So, and he's nice, man. Did you get to see any of the highlights? Or of Yeah, that? I w when you walked in this morning, I had the McDonald's All-American game from not too long ago on the on the TV next to my desk. Where he scored 17 and hit three threes and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of four players in that game that had double figures in points and um yeah three of six from deep five boards three assists too so it's not just like I, I remember i was watching like his first shift in that game and he took two shots that i was like not wild about and then after that he just shot like 50 percent from the floor and mm -hmm. had all of his points rebounds and assists and, and whatever um i think it was paul biancardi on the game he said he scores off the bounce great off penetration and i love how he can find teammates off the dribble drive and so, yeah, like the kid's wired to score. Obviously, he's one of the best combo guards available yeah. at, at this moment. But um, looks for others. Like he's not a – I don't think he's going to be a guy that's 
you know, 16, 18 shots a game. There might be somewhere <laughs> where he does that if he's cooking. But speaking of looking um, for others, he he looked for acquaintance on that lob Saturday at the the hoop summit. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, I like sure. that. For sure, one of the other <laughs> one of the other plays that I saw from earlier was one of the three threes that he hit. Liam McNeely. Oh yeah, he got a three blocked at the top of the key, got his own rebound, <laughs> and then passed it out to Boogie and hit a three. So that Love was it. Uh, that was pretty interesting to see. Yeah, Boogie can Boogie can really go. Boogie can and Boogie. I just I love kids that play with flair, and Boogie's just like. If your name is Boogie, dude. You gotta have some some flair. You gotta have some stuff to you. Exactly, as you like to say. That's exactly right. Some of the other guys hearing that some pro options are on the table for Samto Cyril, the the other big man in that class, monster, 6'10", 240. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I wouldn't rule anything out just yet, but that's just another angle of it to to look towards as opposed to just other school options. Kind of quiet on Carter Knox and Billy Richmond, the two top 25 wings in that class, which, which is a bit surprising to me. Knox is already decommitted, and, and he's available. I still I don't have any reason to think that he won't wind up a Razorback. It's just, it's just kind of been quiet. Uh, and so maybe he's a guy that they get on campus quick here this week and, and get that thing locked up. Richmond is still committed to Kentucky as of – 10 15 Monday morning here and he was one who right away I just thought oh yeah he's gonna be a hog dude right so I don't I don't know like what the hold up yeah, or what's just going him on and there. Travis Perry still in that class right right yeah yeah everyone is decommitted at this point besides him and and Travis Perry Travis Perry was at the uh the Mark Pope press conference yesterday and I don't I don't believe Billy Richmond was so I don't know if it's just a matter of time or or what exactly is going on there. Haven't really been able to get much on that. That that's something that's on my to do list for early this week. Uh, but like I said, I haven't heard anything to the contrary with regarding Knox and Arkansas. So I still feel good about that one. Jaden Quaintance, I know this freaked a bunch of people out yesterday. He's taking a visit to Louisville. Yeah, I'm unbothered by that for a couple of reasons. It's this guy is a I don't want to say generational talent, just not too many people like him come about in college basketball who have to play for two years oh, because sure. of their age yeah. and, and, and his development at that age. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to come across the wrong way here, but this guy's going to be an NBA draft pick lottery pick type of dude in two years, John Calipari, Pat Kelsey. I, I just, I'm sorry. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm, I'm just point. unbothered by the Louisville visit. But, but what I will say, and Quaintance is a five-star McDonald's, McDonald's All-American big man. He is as hot of a commodity as there is out there because he has to play two years of college basketball. Big difference in a two-year investment versus one for a dude that is that talented. He's got a ton of leverage and, and he knows it. And I'm sure his, his camp, knows that as well he's going to get some crazy nil offers and that is probably going to be the ultimate factor here yeah so I wouldn't be surprised if that, that chicken money's real then yeah. you shouldn't have a problem if yeah. you're arkansas so we're going to get a good barometer on that chicken money yeah you're pretty quick because i just i'm telling you right now he is not a dude that cal is interested in missing out on no so you do what you got to do yeah there's right no, yeah there's no doubt i would love to I'd love to – I need to watch more on, on his game. I, I was watching – like I told you the other day, I watched like a two-and-a-half or three-minute video of what he did at the McDonald's All-American game, and I had like ten notes on him. I was just – I fell in love with, with what I saw with him. Um, it's interesting, like these kids who are so highly sought after. I remember I was watching a – old podcast that Julius Randle did. I think it was with Paul Pier or Paul George on his podcast. And Rand Julius Randle was like, I knew where I was going, but I was still was going to take these visits, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he he might be, you know, might be one of those guys and just fielding offers, you know, but um it's wild that he is still 16 years old. Like that that to me doesn't make any sense. No. Given what you see from him in just in that McDonald's All-America game three-minute video clip that I saw, it was insane. 
It was insane. So yeah, he's gonna get he's gonna get a ton of money uh, from somebody. He's gonna have astronomical amounts of money thrown at him by by these schools. But you're right, like the Pat Kelsey Calipari thing. Like that's no disrespect. That's I just, yeah, you know. Yeah, not intended, but yeah, it's let's call a spade a spade here. Right. It's exactly right. So one last thing, and then we'll get out of here. I know we got a meeting here in a few minutes. This Arkansas Kentucky rivalry that's brewing is just it has me really excited. I love this. Did you watch any of the Mark Pope press conference yesterday? So it's interesting. Before I turned on the McDonald's All American game, came in here and I did turn it on. Yeah. And I was watching it. And then Kurt came in here and was like, Bro, you gotta turn this off. I'm so sick of this. <laughs> Not Curtis, Kurt, the other another guy that works in our office. He turned it up. He was like, dude, you gotta turn this off. I'm so sick of <laughs> I'm so sick of all this. And then he said something so funny. He was like, You see all those people in the arena? I was like, Yeah, they put like twenty 20,000 plus in there. It's like, yeah, they they all have as many wins in the NCAA tournament as, as Mark Pope. It's a lot of truth to that. Is, yeah, it cannot be argued. They don't hang banners for press conferences. And don't get me wrong, BBN showed out. That was awesome. I mean, it was really cool. Yeah, it was neat. And I like a lot of the things. The, the whole deal with the uh, driving the bus in there and then bringing off all the old players, and he came out with the 96 championship trophy. That was yeah. cool, man. Yeah. I like that he he didn't want, like, the whatever, like the, the typical jersey they gave the new head coach. He wanted his old jersey. And I was like, this right. is blood, sweat, and tears. And that kind of got me going. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Except and, he'd already taken the pick with the – Yeah. He'd already taken the, right. the pick with the new jersey with Barnhart. Some of it was cheesy, but I think that's just kind of his personality. Sure. Some of it had me, you know, admittedly kind of thinking, I might I might run through a brick wall for this dude. I kind of I kind of like what he's got going on, you yeah. know? So I thought he did a good job, and, and BBN really showed out. The only thing that pissed me off about it was everyone who was comparing it to, to Arkansas. So it, it turned into this weird measuring contest between BBN and, and Hog Twitter, which was funny, but a lot of people just maybe downgrading Arkansas and the fame. It was just two completely different situations. They've, they've known about this Mark Pope thing for multiple days, it was on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Lexington. The Arkansas situation materialized. I mean, that press conference was officially announced the day of. Some yeah, things had like leaked a, out there, but it was officially announced the day of, Wednesday morning. It was at like, like 9, 9 o'clock. A, 9 a.m. Wednesday, and then Cal landed at like 2.30 right. that afternoon, and then the deal was at 6 o'clock that night. On a Wednesday in, in a, a torrential downpour. Rain. Yeah. Right. And, and Arkansas so, still got, I think the estimated crowd was like 7K. Yeah. So they did a great job yeah. for that, all things considered. It was awesome. It was a great environment. It was really cool. It was well done. So kudos to Arkansas. And then also kudos to, to Kentucky for the event that they put on yesterday. Both things can be true. Like both fan bases, in my opinion, are incredible. There's no doubt about it. So I don't know why it has to be this weird measuring contest, but I don't know. What I will say, it it's also interesting but unsurprising to me how the national media glaze was just full steam ahead for the for the blue blood. It was only a matter of time. Sure. Uh, but it's really happening. But flipped it, from like this guy's really gonna follow Cal to yeah. you know, he's gonna recruit the portal really hard and he's already got the already got the fan base bought in and all that like it was it was crazy how that right. flipped so fast you even had got like i think it was fran for Schilla. did you see that where he was like oh it was a it was a nice little turnout for john calipari's intro presser at arkansas but this this is different why would you say that bro <laughs> why why do you even feel the need to go there uh but that's the that's the blue blood glaze it's and it's real it's yeah. a thing Hundred percent. But at the end of the day, like the the dust will settle, the hype from that stuff will will die down, and Arkansas has a Hall of Fame coach. Kentucky has Mark Pope, and both coaches have a pretty much a full roster to build. And then we'll just see what happens when they hit the hardwood, whether it's yeah. at Bud Walton or at, at Rupp Arena. Either way, this is awesome yeah. this is great for college basketball dude yeah it's gonna be incredible like the yeah. we look forward to 
Arkansas Kentucky games on a yearly basis, partially because anytime Kentucky comes to Arkansas, you feel like they've got a shot to knock them off. Kentucky's normally going to come in because of Cal and his roster with a bunch of dudes that you love to hate, you love yes. to you rubbed you love to to root against. Um, and then you go to Kentucky, and it's just like you you feel like you're you're down eight to ten points when you walk in the building. Um, Arkansas had decent success against our, against Kentucky in Rupp Arena the last several years, and now Cal's here, Mark Pope's there. Like the recruiting battles that are going to go on in the next couple of months oh, are yeah. going to heighten this even more. Um, I hope it's a I hope it's a home and home. I don't Me know too. if that's going to be able to work out because you're about to have 16 teams in the same league. Um, if they go to they go to Lexington, we'll. We'll be there. We'll submit credentials for that. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> no so doubt awesome. about it. It's going to be electric. I really can't wait for it. And it's cool to see. It's it's almost a lot of people have said this is a like a win win for everybody kind of deal. And to a degree, I agree with that from the standpoint of it. It feels like Cal is rejuvenated with the new opportunity, and it feels like that Kentucky fan base is rejuvenated with a new voice in the program. There, Was so it I, Mitch Barnhart said something like, "We're taking our program back." And that's kind of a weird statement, man, wasn't it? But yeah, that kind of that kind of struck. Just forget me everything the man did for the bit. forget the national title and the the multiple Final Fours and yeah. the forty some odd draft picks that have come out. You could have driven that bus into Rupp Arena yesterday, and you'd have needed a second one to get all of Cal's NBA draft picks onto the floor. <laughs> so let's just not forget what the man did for the program. Yeah. I get it. The last few years didn't go as great as, as everybody wanted to. And it was time for a change. That's all fair. But I mean, let's not rewrite history here. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You just hired a guy who was like a, a big part of maybe your greatest, the greatest team that you've had. Mm-hmm. And let's you so you're going with history on that in that aspect, but you're, are you going to respect what Cal did there? Yeah. This and take your program back at the same time? Like, come on, man. It's interesting. I love this, it's man. It's crazy. I'm fired up for this I know. Season. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Cannot wait for the, the season to get here. But got to have a freaking team first. So That's true. Uh, we, are, we are done for the morning. Will we be back later today? Who knows? We're not putting any more time frames on this. They will start getting commits when they start getting commits. We're practicing patience here Yeah. at Natty State Sports. But it was an eventful weekend, good times, exciting times for Arkansas basketball, and we'll be back with you guys soon. For Scotty Bordelon, it's been Curtis Wilkerson. It's been the pod at the Palace. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, we will talk to you next time.